welcome back to another lecture of earthquake resistant design of structures right now as we were discussing in the series of lectures in the last lecture we have discussed regarding the static coefficient method that is the static analysis method right or it is also known as equivalent at force method in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about the dynamic analysis of structure that is the uh, response spectrum method in the time history analysis now as i told you earlier also if you look at the sequence wise then uh, if you have a very simple structure then and if you want to work on approximation then in that case the static coefficient method is a good method but if you have a multi story building and a regular structure with a regular frame then in that case it is advisable to go for response spectrum method and if you have an irregular structure and in that also you have a multi story building then in that case time history analysis is preferred right so if you look at the uh, authentication of method or the accuracy of method then in that case uh, you can say that first comes the time history analysis second is response spectrum method and third is the static coefficient method right now response spectrum method and time history analysis method both are having the time component that is a dynamic component and that is why they are included under the dynamic analysis part and the static force method is considering only the maximum values of uh, peak response and as a result of that is that was included in the static sector right okay so when you talk about the concept of response spectrum method first then in that case we can say that the basically the concept is such that whenever an horizontal acceleration is generated at the ground level right that is ground shaking is initiated uh, or the earthquake force is uh, is initiated at the ground level then what happens is that these waves travel to the surface of the earth and they come in contact with the ground surface or with the structure is receding now once they come in contact with the ground surface being based on the soil profile that is there whether it is of soft medium or hard type then these uh, waves are going to propagate and they are going to transfer the forces of these structures that are uh, constructed above the ground right now once that is happening then as a result of that what is going to happen is that the structure above is undergoing to go displacement and based on the degree of freedom and the uh, concentration of mass at the floor level the maximum displacement and maximum amplitude is going to be calculated right so when you talk about response spectrum method then we can say that it is basically a plot of peak response this peak response can be calculated in terms of velocity can be calculated in terms of displacement or can can be calculated in terms of acceleration also right so it can be a graph of acceleration versus time it can be a graph of velocity versus time and it can it can also be a graph of displacement versus time right with respect to the period of structural de a single degree of freedom system for a given accelerogram right same thing is again highlighted over here where you can see that for different time periods in that case in the first case what is that was that the time period was empirical time period so when in case of empirical time period what happens is that that the formula is given in the code predefined so that formula is only to be calculated where in whereas in case of response spectrum what happens is that considering the geometry of the structures the time period is calculated how the time period is calculated then first the angular frequency of the structure is to be calculated that is omega is equal to under root of k by m where k is the Uh, stiffness of the structure m is the mass of the structure once the uh, angular frequency is available then we can calculate the natural frequency natural frequency is given by f is equal to omega by 2 pi the omega is equal to under root of k by m and once the natural frequency is available to you then what we can do is we can calculate the natural time period and the time period formula is given by time period is equal to 1 by f right so once this uh, value of angular frequency is available with us then we can find out natural frequency from natural frequency we can find out the time period right so various for various values of period of single degree of freedom structures find finding out the peak acceleration for given important earthquake acceleration and plot response versus the period so uh, this is uh, this snapshot from the graph that is taken from the is1893 code that is given where you can see that on the right and uh, that that is uh, where you can see that on the x axis you have the time period and on the y axis you have the spectral acceleration values that are given by sa by g similar type of graphs can be produced for time period versus uh, the uh, velocity and time period for displacement also and as you can see that uh, depending upon the type of the soil the behavior of the structure is going to be there because based on the 
amount of force that is going to be transferred to the structure the structure is undergoing to go displacement and maximum response values are going to be obtained right so that is why three different curves are drawn first is for the rocky soil second is for the medium soil and third is for the soft soil right now again the other factor that is going to be there in consideration is also going to be the damping of this damping that is going to be there in the structures so damping is dependent on the material of construction as well right so material of construction will be dependent on different types of possibilities are there where the structure can be made from steel other possibility is made from concrete other possibility is that it is a masonry structure maybe a wood structure or maybe an earthen structure right but the possibility is that in day to day life for multi story buildings we either go for steel structures or concrete structures and for low rise structures we may go for masonry structures so in case of steel structures the damping value is in the range of 2 to 5% for case of rcc structures the damping value is in the range of 5 to 10% and for weak structures the value is also in the range of 5 to 10% so steel per se steel structures are going to have less damping value available and concrete structures are going to have more damping value available. right so depending on these damping values also the response of the structure is going to vary now again the basics of the uh, what you can say the response spectrum method the calculation of forces is going to be more or less uh, using is going to be the same using the formulas that we use for the static coefficient method that is vb is equal to h into w and h is equal to zisa by 2rc but what the difference here is going to be is there that the period and mode shape of the structures are obtained using free vibration analysis and not empirical formula right so based on the response of the behavior of the structures with corresponding to every mass we are going to have a set of eigen values and eigen vectors and using these eigen values and eigen vectors the time period is going to be found out right one and that is the only major difference between the static coefficient method and the response reduction response spectrum method right because in case of response spectrum method the empirical formulas are not used to find out the time period and that is what it makes it different from the static coefficient method sa by g is obtained from the same response chart for all the modes separate right distribution of forces at various stories is carried out using the mode shape participant mode shape and modal participation factors that we can uh, that we are going to see in the uh, remaining lectures of the upcoming lectures and the response quantities that is the bm and the sf etc are combined using the cqc method or complete quadratic combination method that is uh, we have couple of methods based on which you can calculate the forces and these forces can be multiplied so here an example just to understand there is your multiple degree of freedom system is shown where a g plus 2 structure is shown so here in this case we can see that the masses are concentrated at three levels right that is 1 2 and 3 as a result of that we can say that the structure is having going to have undergo three degree of freedom system and when it is a three degree of freedom system that means the number of mode shapes that are expected from the structures are also going to be three so mode shape 1 mode shape 2 and mode shape 3 are the three mode shapes that are going to be there as i said that corresponding to each and every mass we are going to have a set of eigen values and eigen vectors and based based on these the mode shape diagrams can be drawn right next comes is the dynamic next comes is the time history analysis which is also included under the effect under the category of dynamic analysis right now what is the difference between uh, if you talk about the uh, difference between the response spectrum method and the time history analysis method then first thing is that this time history time history results of time history analysis method are going to be more accurate for a given earthquake as compared to that of a response spectrum analysis method right why it is going to be same why it is going to be more accurate because the actual spectral acceleration of the site on which the particular structure is proposed to be constructed that spectral acceleration is to be worked out and for that site specific spectral acceleration only the structure is to be designed by considering the forces that are likely to act on it at the time of the birth right so as a result of that the values that we are going to use in case of time and time is time analysis are going to or the, or the parameters of earthquake that we are going to use for calculation are going to be more realistic and more site specific as compared to response spectrum method right now what is going to happen is that dynamic analysis will be performed either by the time history method or by the response spectrum method now we are going to have two base shears why first is from the static method that is the seismic coefficient method and second is from the response spectrum method right so we need to compare that if the base shear from response spectrum method is less than the base shear of the seismic coefficient method then it has to be multiplied by a scale factor and 
the scale factor has to be multiplied and it has to be ensured that the minimum amount of base shear is going to be 98% or 90% or 80% to 100% or in the range of 80% to 100% of the seismic coefficient factor. Right? So if these values of the base shear that is obtained from the response spectrum is less, then also on the conservative side, it has to be done such that the scale factor has to be applied and the scale factor has to be applied in such a manner that the resultant base shear is at least 80% or 80% to in the range of 80% to 100% of the value of base shear for seismic coefficient method. So the corresponding values of bending moment, shear force and all these other values, story shears and all these values, displacement, amplitude, all these values are to be multiplied by the scale factor which we calculate accordingly. Right? Then this is comparison of pseudo-static analysis and dynamic analysis. Right? So uh, I think uh, nothing much to discuss over here regarding this particular slide. Now the last thing that comes to mind is what is the code telling? Now this uh, table that is shown over here that was for IS-189-2002 code where dynamic analysis shall be performed for regular buildings having height greater than 40 meters in seismic zone 4 and 5 and for height greater than 90 meters in zone 2 and 3. That is for regular buildings. For irregular buildings, for height greater than 10 meters in seismic zone 4 and 5, great high, height greater than 40 meters in zone 2 and 3. And for industrial and frame buildings with large fan and large height, right? But also recommend, though not mandatory, when height less than 40 meters in seismic zone 2 and 3, right? So this is a snapshot that is taken from IS-1893-2002, where the parameter was the height and height was considered at minimum 40 meter height if it is there then any structure above 40 meter has to be designed or has to be analyzed for, for, for dynamic analysis method however in 2016 code this particular clause has been modified and now irrespective of the size of the building or irrespective of the height of the building it is suggested that dynamic analysis should be performed in order to achieve accurate results thanks for watching the video thank you